I'm Mike, and today we're gonna look at some results of the recent blood tests that I got after being vegan for about six years. And then I wanna say a few things about whole food vegan eating and some comments challenging me that I got a few days ago. It's gonna be fun, I'll just put that at the end. You don't have to watch it. All right, let's go. Now I wasn't able to get every single nutrient tested sadly, but I was able to get my B12 levels, my blood protein levels, and also my whole lipid panel. My doctor would not let me do all the tests. He was like, you're perfectly healthy, it's a waste. And I was like, but I'm vegan. Doesn't that mean I could be missing something, huh? I mean, look how thin I am. I mean, people skinny shame me on YouTube. But then he was like, you're smack dab in the middle of the normal BMI range, nice try. At this point, I'm just joking, but you get the gist. I wasn't able to get everything. All right, let's start with my B12 levels really quickly. I have been vegan for several years now, so those B12 stores that I would have before going vegan would technically be running low. And I have bad periods where I've been really bad about taking B12, and overall I probably average like twice a week, which I need to get better about. But I do eat fortified plant milk several times a week, so at least I'm covered there. Okay, let's look at the results. The reference range is 200 to 900, and I was above the middle at 675. So how does this compare to the average omnivore? Here is a chart from the Canadian government on the average levels of B12 by age. Now, my levels were in picograms per milliliter, and I had to change them to picomoles per liter to compare them which puts me right there at about 500 picomoles per liter, quite above the average omnivore for all ages and my age group specifically. So I can rest easy, but I'm not gonna stop taking it. In fact, I'm gonna take it more consistently just to get in the habit. It really only costs me a few cents a day. All right, now to my free blood protein, which is also known as my serum albumin. I've had so many people concerned about my protein since going vegan, so this will be interesting. When I got the results, I called my mom and I was like, I have a protein deficiency and she was like, oh my, well I can't say that I'm surprised honey, you're vegan. But no, I was punking her in the range of 3.5 to 5.0, mine was 4.9. Intuitively, I always knew your protein levels were good. Now remember where you get your curly hair. And according to this study, that is higher than the average omnivore, the average person that eats animal flesh and their byproducts under the guise that they need the protein. And the vegans were at 4.9, exactly where I am. Okay, now let's move on to lipids. I am always preaching about ideal levels of bad or LDL cholesterol being between 50 or 70. So if mine weren't, that would be pretty hypocritical. Thankfully, it was right there at 50 where populations that don't have heart attacks and primates are, as this study that I always mention mentions. Now my total cholesterol is at 107. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, that's too low. Yeah, it might be heart attack proof, but it's too low. And I will do a video about this in the future and make an actually good case for it. But for now, I will just say that it is right in that range of 100 to 150 that populations that don't have atherosclerosis are at. And that study was not done by some biased vegan doctors trying to say that low cholesterol is good. No, that was by Lauren Cordain, one of the founders of the paleo diet, actually. My HDL, known as good cholesterol, was in the normal range. It's known as good cholesterol because it clears out the LDL, or bad cholesterol. And my triglycerides were at 80, below 150 is good. Now I will say it does appear that I have genetically lower levels of cholesterol. People that eat the exact same way as me, I've seen have higher levels of cholesterol. And I do actually eat at restaurants about three times a week, which is not ideal. But this is hilarious because I do have a lot of people in the comments under Unnatural Vegan's recent video criticizing me, saying that I'm orthorexic. And basically one of the only foods I've ever eaten on camera was a field roasted sausage. Anyway, whatever. Now for the sake of whole food vegan diets, I do want to address some of the claims that Unnatural Vegan made in her recent video. I didn't want to do a whole response video here, so I figured I'd just tack it on the end of this video. If you aren't interested in this next section of the video, it's not your thing, fine, just stop the video. Thank you for watching the blood part though. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. For you others, let's keep going. All right, just like how I explained why I thought Unnatural Vegan was wrong when she said that meat doesn't cause cancer a while back, I now want to explain why I believe she was wrong in most of what she said in the response video to me. That still is not a reason to say misogynistic or violent things about her in the comments below. That doesn't help anybody. 
According to Unnatural Vegan, my whole food vegan diet is a superfood based diet that is not economically viable or feasible. She bases this off how I used chia seeds as an example of how to get enough plant-based omega to create enough DHA using conservative numbers to completely cover your bases. As many of you could tell, my preventing deficiencies video was simply showing examples, options for how you can meet your nutritional needs, which she took to mean tyrannical mandates of what you have to eat every single day. A simple explanation of why this is wrong. To say this is a Volkswagen bug, it is an example of how you can meet your transportation needs with a car is not the same as saying this is a Volkswagen bug, you must drive the Beetle and only the Beetle every day. Das ist sein only way to transport. And that covers 80% of her video. But seriously, other examples for Chia are flax, which I've covered in previous videos as well. But for Omega, she goes straight to canola oil. And since I follow the recommendations of Dr. Esselstyn, who has reversed more cardiovascular disease than virtually anybody else, who says no oil, and that includes canola oil. Why? Because of the brachial artery tourniquet test, I've told you we now know what are the foods that every time they pass your lips, you injure, you imperil, and you compromise the capacity of your endothelial cell, you injure your HDL cholesterol, and you disfavor your endothelial progenitor cell. What are the foods that do that? Any oil. Pure virgin, olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, canola oil, canola oil, canola oil, palm oil, injures endothelial cells. And there are other studies on other reasons why canola oil is not a health food, but just to back up Esselstyn here, this study found that just a few tablespoons of canola oil decreases your arteries' ability to function to dilate by over 10%. Extra virgin olive oil was even worse, so it's good to keep your oil consumption down at the very least, not to make it a nutritional target. And the ironic part of her economic attack on my whole grain and legume based diet, the cheapest vegan diet I've ever eaten, is that buying bulk chia online is actually cheaper per pound than buying these bulk specialty mock meats that she regularly promotes. A six pack of Beyond Meat chicken tenders, $10 per pound. Also flax is even cheaper as low as $3 per pound. Then she attacks my mention of sesame butter or tahini as a source of calcium, even going as far to mention in the comments that it was worse than she previously thought. This made me actually laugh out loud, not only because tahini is an ingredient in hummus, the vegan cornerstone, but this atheist's personal nutritional god that comprises 90% of her recommendations, the vegan RD, makes the exact same recommendation. Make sure you are getting plenty of calcium by choosing food, 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 blah, 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 or tahini. This just proves to me that it was less about me actually being wrong and more about her just disagreeing with stuff that I said because I said it. But she's not biased in any circumstances, not like the evil Dr. Gregor who she criticized for being biased in the same video. She then dismisses what was actually just a reiteration of the literature on calcium supplements from the Journal of Bone Mineral Metabolism. This isn't me misinterpreting the literature, this is me reiterating the recommendations of experts. Which is the opposite of what she did when she recommended against getting a blood test, which I said might be a good idea if you're curious. Finally, if you really want to cover yourself and you are so fortunate, why not get a blood test every so often? How about instead we follow professional advice and take a few safe, cheap, effective, convenient supplements. Again, this is hypocrisy because she links Jack Norris, another vegan nutritionist, in virtually every description of her videos. And Jack Norris says if you're curious about your nutrient levels for a particular nutrient, get them tested. Here's an example with DHA. Might be like, that's fine, Mike. I don't really care about that stuff. But didn't you just outright misconstrue what she said about whole food vegan diets being crazy and took that way out of context and used all that manipulative editing? He intentionally edited his video to make it look as though I said whole food plant-based is crazy. Next up is uh, crazy vegan diets, you know, unsustainable, over-the-top extreme vegan diets. Um, not only are diets like fully raw and raw till four unhealthy, but they're also really off-putting to most people. I'm also going to include the whole food plant-based movement here um, as well. While you know, eating a diet predominated by fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes, obviously is not crazy. Uh, the way that it is promoted by some followers, unfortunately, 
it's not exactly rational and it's not very inclusive. That's what she said, and while some of her viewers didn't buy it, most of them did. In the video, under the category of crazy vegan diets, she said, I am going to have to include whole food vegan diets here. Here being the place that she defined as crazy vegan diets. She says that because she went on to state that a diet predominated by whole foods is healthy, that she did not actually believe that a whole food vegan diet was crazy, despite putting it in the section about crazy vegan diets. And then proceeded to rip into whole food vegan diets for another 15 minutes, even almost painting them as an eating disorder. Maybe that was just my interpretation. Here's why a diet predominated by whole foods is not a whole food vegan diet. It is not semantically correct to say so. The definition of predominates is the main element of the greater in number or amount, the majority of. Let's look at an example of a diet that is predominated by whole foods in which the main element is whole foods. 70% whole grains and legumes, and then, you know, 30% breakdown between cocaine, alcohol, oil, and powdered sugar. It would be one thing if all the literature showing that a vegan diet that was predominated by whole foods reversed heart disease and diabetes, but it doesn't. It is a whole food vegan diet without oil, without refined foods. For example, in Esselstyn's study of nearly 200 people with advanced cardiovascular disease, of those that stuck with the whole food vegan oil-free diet, they had 100 times less heart disease and stroke than those who didn't stay with the diet. The power that has for preventing diseases cannot translate to a standard vegan diet, a vegan diet that includes a reasonably large amount of processed foods. That is why I cannot ethically recommend that somebody stays on a standard vegan diet for their whole life. That just wouldn't be right. But to be completely fair, so many times I've mentioned, you can choose where you want to be on the scale in terms of whole food vegan diet. You know, it's whatever's worth it for you. Maybe you want to have some cocaine in your diet. I'm just joking but maybe you really want to prevent these leading killing diseases. Maybe one of your immediate family members died of heart disease and you don't want that to happen to you. This is the best option. And no, just because you take a couple supplements does not mean you're not eating a whole food vegan diet. Supplements are not food. The fact that I support recommendations to take B12 and a DHA pill every few days if you are not getting enough omegas in your diet does not mean that I don't promote a whole food vegan diet. In conclusion, I did not misrepresent Unnatural Vegan's opinion on whole food vegan diets being crazy. She misrepresented her own beliefs by her use of language. To illustrate this one final time, I'm simply gonna switch out the topic here. Next up, crazy diets. I'm gonna have to include a vegan diet here because, well, a mostly vegan diet is healthy. A lot of vegans are crazy and will shame you. On top of that, it appears that she pretended to believe that my examples of ways to meet nutritional needs were mandates that were the only possible way. This is obviously dishonest. And then she went on to promote her agenda of squashing the vegan health message, which many times she has said is not compelling. This is unethical because she deliberately hides information on a healthier vegan diet from her ethical vegan followers, which could prolong their life and the longer living vegans with less heart disease we have, the better off a vegan movement will be. And no, presenting a cascade of healthiness that can be chosen to be eaten on a vegan diet does not turn people away from veganism. Could it perhaps be more damaging that virtually every single video in her feed is a vegan on vegan attack video, which is why I am just simply hiding this one at the end of a video so that I don't pollute my feed with more vegan vitriol. All right, well, that's it for today. Sorry if this feels like drama to you. I'm just trying to defend myself. All right, see you next time. Feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And thank you for watching.